Good evening. Buzzing tonight. Barb Nation, get ready for Nicki Minaj to come to town. How Dancing with the Stars became more like Dancing with the Felons. A recap of all the drama on the season finale of The Bachelorette. And later, stick around to find out who this year's Super Bowl halftime performer is. This and our takes on these topics are coming up. Welcome back to The Buzz. I'm Kennedy Fleming. And I'm Allie Popolarczyk. Everyone will be pounding their alarms on October 9th here in Columbia to welcome rapper and singer-songwriter Nicki Minaj. Her Pink Friday 2 world tour will be making a stop at Colonial Life Arena featuring some of her most popular songs like Barbie World, Super Bass, and Starships. The tour began in Philadelphia last Wednesday and her stop here in Columbia is the second to last. Some cities will have guest appearances by Tyga and Bia Skillbang as well. Queens, New York will be her last stop on October 11th, wrapping up her fifth tour in 13 years. Tickets can be purchased on Ticketmaster anywhere from $60 to almost $800, and doors will open at 8 p.m. with a show start time of 9 p.m. Kennedy, I feel like I kind of have to stop by and see mm. that show. I love one of her favorite songs. It is a feature, but it's Beauty and a Beat with Justin Bieber. Okay. Justin Bieber was my first concert ever, so maybe it'll be like a good full circle moment for me. Are you thinking about checking it out? You see, I definitely would check it out, but with her very heavy track run of being like one to three hours late and it being on a school night, not sure if I can tune in, mm -hmm. but I would love to hear Moment for Life and Pound the Alarm because I have a very distinct memory of listening to Pound the Alarm on Just Dance. Oh, okay, yes. That exact dance. Mm -hmm. I think of it every time and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. it. That's it's it just me. so nostalgic. So maybe yeah. like stop in just for that number at probably 11.30 at night yep. and then you can go back, <laughs> go to bed, get ready for a class in the morning. I think that's like a good, good way to get the experience in, but also like keep yourself centered for the rest of the school week. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And not only that, like it's a question like how, like I know you said the tickets were like 300 through $800, but like mm -hmm. how much, would you be willing to pay for like a Nikki seat? And like, where would you sit? Oh, true. I mean, I would be taking, as the broke college student approach, I would probably be doing the cheapest options they have. Yeah. I don't really care where I would be because I'm not a, like a super fan of her. Right. But if I could just get the experience, some of my friends back home got to see her a couple days ago. So right. I kind of got a feel through their like Instagram stories. Yeah. So I would, I would know what's coming up next, but mm -hmm. I don't need to be right in her face with exactly. $800 tickets. So like up in the nosebleeds, like that would be like, yeah. the perfect key key. Because mm -hmm. I would try to be like at least in the middle because that's usually where I go for concerts. Yeah. Like if it was my fave, I'd be in the front. Mm -hmm. For sure, I'd be in the pit. Yeah. But for now, yeah. <laughs> It's a good mix. Get the experience, get the cheapest tickets out there. So we'll see, but yeah, definitely have to take into account the fact that it's a Wednesday. <laughs> yes, definitely. Would you watch a show with a convicted felon on it? That's the question everyone is asking after Dancing with the Stars announced their lineup last week. Dancing with the Stars is a show where celebrities compete in a dance competition with professional dancers by their side. Usually Dancing with the Stars chooses celebrities who have positive reputation, but this year the show chose a different route with one of their guest stars. Anna Delvey is set to join the cast of Dancing with the Stars this season. Anna Delvey, aka Anna Sorokin, is a con artist who pretended to be a German heiress with a large fortune and used this facade to steal money from hotels and wealthy New Yorkers. Her main goal was to open a members-only art club in Manhattan. Her popularity skyrocketed after a 2022 Netflix series called Inventing Anna, which mirrored her life. Delvey's participation on the show has garnered a lot of negative attention, with some fans, quote, I don't understand. This is Dancing with the Stars, not Dancing with the Felons. Anna is allowed to perform because she got permission from ICE to participate. She will also be performing with an ankle monitor on her leg because she is supposed to be under house arrest. Most of the outrage stems from the fact that she's a convicted felon and that ICE is allowing her to stay in America. Many fans pointed out the duality between how Delvey is being treated and the reality for many families. Award winner Whoopi Goldberg said on The View, quote, I think back to all the families who've had family members arrested by ICE, who have gone to court to get their dad or their mother's back or their brother's back, and this woman, they gave her permission to go do this. So will you watch it? If you're interested, the th new 33rd season of Dancing with the Stars returns on September 14th on ABC. So what do you think about Anna? being on the show. See, my problem is, is I have been a lifelong Dancing with the Stars fan. I grew up with it. My Nana and I, that was like the show that we bonded over, yeah. that we loved. We went to their tours together whenever I was growing up. So 
I feel like adding her to the show just adds a little too much controversy for my liking. Yeah. I'll still be tuning in with my friends, but I feel like especially when they added in even like Sean Spicer adding in a political figure, no matter where you stand with that, it is a little on the brim of is this okay or not okay. Right. So then adding her kind of gives me like the same idea with all of that. True. And I think one of the biggest reasons I think they really did it, like with the political figure, like you said, is mm -hmm. for the shock factor. Because I mean, would I have really like noticed Dancing with the Stars, like this season specifically, mm -hmm. if not for her? Probably not, except for the fact that another girl, I think her name is McKenna, she is this like Disney star and she's mm -hmm. going to be on the show too, but I would have never known that if I hadn't seen Anna Delvey with the ankle monitor on TikTok, like yeah. what is going on here? Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely from like a Dancing with the Stars like fan perspective, do you think it would make you want to watch it less or is it more like, I'll just skip over her stuff? I feel like I'll skip over her stuff just as like a true fan. I've always been, you know, the person who's there for the people that I was interested in, like Disney stars that I watched growing up and then now like reality stars as I get into those shows a little right. bit more. But I know that there are a lot of people that are saying I'm tuning in just for her and I don't really think that's the mindset that they want for the show. Mm -hmm. I agree with you saying it's the shock factor that's bringing in a bigger audience, but I feel like even without her, they still would have had a really good lineup for this year. Oh, definitely. I feel like they could have... They could pick somebody a little bit better, mm -hmm. but going off of that, like, who is your favorite celebrity that they had on the show? Ever? I loved Zendaya, and I loved Milo Mannheim. I loved all the Disney stars especially, but then also anytime they've had Olympians on, when they had Lori Hernandez, Ali Raisman, and then now they have two Olympians this season too. Those have always been my favorite because I've... I was always a big fan of the gymnasts growing up and yeah. then now seeing how they adapt their gymnastic skills to a dance style because I grew up a dancer. So seeing how oh they gosh. kind of flipped that was pretty cool. What about you? I love that. Um, so for me, it was definitely Zendaya. Mm -hmm. And then I, we forgot, I forgot how to pronounce her name. Shantui? Oh, Sochi. Last Sochi. season. Yes. Sochi. Last season, mm -hmm. she ate down. Like, I have never wanted to watch a compilation so much in my life. And I said, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to sit here in this good 30 minutes mm -hmm. and I'm going to really watch it. And she is so good. And then you have Zendaya with like her being Zendaya. Mm -hmm. You know, like when they bring on actors, it's like, okay, how can this actor make, make be a real dancer? And, Especially because yeah. she came from a dance show. It's like, mm -hmm. you got to step it up to the plate. Yes. And stuff like that. And then seeing mm -hmm. that they get those actors when they are in their teenage years, right before they skyrocket. Like right. Zendaya was on when she was 16 and then Sochi was 17. So right. now that they have had the careers that, you know, Sochi's about to have and that Zendaya has like accumulated over the last couple years, it's cool to see that that's kind of where they started. Because some people, they join Dancing with the Stars when they're on the other side of their peak, you yeah. know, a little bit older, stuff like that. But seeing them skyrocket from there is really cool. You know, that's such a good point. I've never thought about it mm -hmm. like that. Because, I, I mean, we saw them when they were, like, Zendaya was, like, a little tiny girl. And now yeah. she's, like, she was on stuff like Euphoria. Like, whoa, mm -hmm. like, chill a little bit. But it's just so exciting to see. Yeah. And I'm honestly also really excited about the, you know, the one Olympian. Mm -hmm. And she's really body positive, And she's the one with the Welcome to the Olympic Villa. You know what I'm talking about on oh, TikTok? Oh, Ilona? Ilona. Ilona? Something yes, like that. I don't know her? how to pronounce her name either. Yes. I love her so much because mm -hmm. she's so confident in herself. And yes. she's like, listen, y'all can call me all these names on the internet, but I'm here and you're not. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I love that confidence. And so I'm excited to see how she's going to do it mm -hmm. as well. And it's nice having positive people like that to kind of, you know, mask the fact that they did bring on a convicted exactly you gotta have so, a good and a bad yeah, yeah yeah of course but i know that i'll be watching soon so don't leave just yet we will be back with some national entertainment news right after this i will certainly be tuning in to dancing with the stars to support the actual stars like the most recent bachelor joey grazaday and the most recent bachelorette jen tran the finale of season 21 of The Bachelorette last week left fans speechless as the unpredictable kept happening and happening and happening. Tran arrived to the after the final rose tell-all, ready to reveal her story, one that has changed drastically within the past two months. She not only made history as the first Asian American Bachelorette, but also flipped the script as she proposed to the final contestant, Devin Strader. She revealed on stage, overwhelmed with emotion, that Devin, who fought for her all season long, ended their engagement after a 15-minute phone call just a month and a half ago. This left audience members in shock as Je Devin expressed his love and care for Jen all season long and continued to keep the main thing the main thing. 
However, his intentions became clear as Jen talked all about how his healing process from this relationship consisted of following other Bachelorette franchise women on Instagram and clubbing with fellow Bachelorette contestants. Strader joined Tran on stage to recap their journey through his eyes and to hear both sides of what their secret engagement looked like. Tran took this moment to enlighten Strader with the facts, her emotions, and the narrative he started writing after their engagement. He claims to have been honest about his doubts throughout their entire journey. Since the finale concluded last Tuesday, Tran has already pushed through the heartbreak and has been selected for Dancing with the Stars, threw out the first pitch at a Boston Red Sox game, and has even been posting on social media with her second runner-up, Jonathan Johnson. For now, Jen will spend her weeks channeling those emotions into dancing, and fans will just have to wait and see if she finds a man who will actually go through with an engagement. Kennedy, I know that you didn't watch the show at all this season. This was the first season of The Bachelorette that I watched, and I have some thoughts. Is there anything you heard from that that you were just completely in shock about? Because that's what me and my roommates were like as the yeah. finale finale kept going on. Well, the main thing is he did her dirty on live television, mm -hmm. and that's even worse than doing her dirty in private. Like, I've had... My cousin was actually on a reality show, like oh, that one, okay. Cinema, and she was actually engaged, too. Got all engaged on the show, and it didn't work out. And honestly, do I know why I didn't work out? No. <laughs> I didn't think he was the right one for her. I knew that, but mm -hmm. I, she didn't clock it earlier, but I did mm -hmm. on the show. So okay. that's my take on seeing that. But you're the professional, so what, what, how did you feel about this? I mean, I feel like, honestly, the situation is just difficult in general. I don't know how she's feeling, but I can understand the mental, you know, hula hoops and tricks and all of that that she's going through right now, trying to understand exactly how she's feeling. But... Honestly, the big thing, the main thing, that got me watching this finale was mm -hmm. that the ABC producers made her watch that engagement with Devin sitting right next to her. And she talked about in the interviews afterwards that she knew that she was going to have to watch the engagement. Her only suggestion with it was that she wanted Devin on stage so that he could see his past actions mm -hmm. and hopefully learn from that. But I feel like even though this has gone over the past month and a half, that's not enough time to completely understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So to have her watch something as heartfelt as that in front of everybody on live television was just, I feel like uncalled for, for yeah. her mental state going through all of that. They, they set her up real bad, mm -hmm. but at least she like took a little bit of revenge for herself, mm -hmm. having him on stage, yes. having all the people, all the other castmates look at him like, dude, like you were doing all this behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so, even though she has to like relive that whole experience again, she knows never to go through that. And yeah. you know, with her new man, maybe she can like live her dream that she wanted with him mm -hmm. without like the heartbreak. Yeah. This is a hope for her. And now that it won't be on live television, national television, maybe yeah. that'll like flip it a little bit more for her that she doesn't have a time commitment or right. a time frame that she has to find someone mm -hmm. within. Now that she's been hanging out with her second runner up, Jonathan, everyone's right. wondering, maybe she cut him too early. Maybe she wasn't seeing things that we were seeing because I'm a Jonathan stan. I right. feel like he was good for her from the beginning. So hopefully seeing that she'll have time to heal, but then also mm -hmm. find the people that are right for her family, friends that'll support her and then mm. hopefully a guy that will go through with his actions this time definitely mm -hmm. for sure I feel like oh my gosh I had a great thought but then it went away that's okay but I think also too one thing about like these reality TV shows that you have to think about sometimes is that these people are under a time crunch mm -hmm. so even though to us it's like dang like how did you fall in love with this guy like I can see why you would do that because you didn't they don't form the time to like really get to know the person mm -hmm. because it is a social experiment. So th there's always a little bit of piece of like the people, I feel like they understand that it cannot be true. Like mm -hmm. something that happened on the show or the person that they saw may be a lie or fake and they won't know until they get out of the show and they're like, dude, yeah, and there were a lot of contestants on this show, the guys that were mentioning throughout this entire journey for them, that they felt like there were other contestants there that were there for the wrong reasons, and so many fans jumped on those guys, and they're like, no, Devin's a good guy, he'll, he'll follow through with everything, we can tell he's genuine, you guys aren't, and now they're all kind of biting their tongues and, right. you know, rescinding what they said before because they're like, wait, you kind of saw stuff that we didn't see, so exactly. it's interesting, but at the end of the day, it is reality TV, and it's meant to be a performance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what it will always be, you mm -hmm. know? 
And going off of that with another exciting show, mm -hmm. with the Super Bowl fastly approaching this year, there has been one major question that hasn't been answered. Who will perform at this year's halftime show? The Super Bowl is not only a time for the two best football teams in the nation to compete, but also is a time to showcase one of the world's greatest artists. Last year, Usher performed, putting on a once-in-a-lifetime show on roller skates with over 100 dancers and a lot of theatrics. It was amazing, and after that, the question became, who will perform in New Orleans in February 2025? This weekend, the NFL and Apple announced that this year's halftime Super Bowl performance will be done by Grammy winner Kendrick Lamar. Recently, Lamar has gone viral for the song called Not Like Us, in which he talks about his beef with other hip-hop artist Drake. This is not the first time he performed at the Super Bowl. In 2022, Lamar performed with other influential rap and R&B-based artists such as Mary J. Blige and Snoop Dogg. Kendrick Lamar said, quote, I'm looking forward to bringing hip hop to the NFL championship game. Rap music is still the most impactful genre to date. So have you ever listened to like Kendrick Lamar's music outside of like his main title tracks? Or? I, I feel like no, his newest song has been the one I've seen on TikTok a lot recently, yeah. and that's the one that's gained popularity. I'm not a huge hip hop rap girl. I, I stick to my Disney roots. I stick to my, my pop artist, my Sabrina Carpenter, Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. But I liked whenever he was featured in the Super Bowl halftime show before. I know some people weren't a fan, but I know that there were other artists there that my parents have listened to in the past right. that they kind of got to enjoy. So yeah. it was a little mix of everything, but I'm excited to see how he kind of takes it as now a solo performance yeah I definitely agree with you like Kendrick Lamar when I think about him I do think of him as like influential and in, like my childhood and stuff like that but mm -hmm. I've never really gotten to him because like you I don't really listen to rap mm -hmm. and hip-hop I do look a little R&B a little okay. blues a little jazz a gospel yeah. you know k-pop pop and stuff like that but hip-hop isn't really in my genre stuff like that so I remember when it was announced like in 2022 that he was going to be performing with them and it was for i think it was the 50th anniversary for rap mm -hmm. and i was like oh that's really really cool but is it going to really be interesting to me and i mean obviously the crowds weren't really that big of a fan of it because mm -hmm. to be honest they just couldn't see and yes. they couldn't hear him either yeah so it was like mm -hmm. so like you said i'm really excited to see what kendrick does with this like mm -hmm. how is he going to take it what songs is he going to use you know especially like after usher's big performance last right. year i was a big fan of that one there were still a couple songs here and there a couple features that i would have appreciated hearing as someone who kind of grew up with his music yeah. but i feel like kendrick lamar just like reaches a bigger audience so yeah. now that i know this i feel like i kind of have to start listening to his songs a little bit start memorizing them so right. you know come super bowl time i kind of know what's going on right kind of tune in a little bit i really i really like usher's performance you know if you get it you get it, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But speaking of Usher's performance, like, what was your favorite halftime, like, performance? <sighs> favorite halftime? I mean, I loved Katy Perry's just oh, because it was, like, the perfect time in my life whenever I was listening to her to kind of get that experience of seeing the big theatrics that she put on for all yeah. of that. And then, I mean, Left Shark. He yeah. has just been <laughs> iconic till this day. Very I much. know my friends want to be him for Halloween. So, yeah. so it's nice seeing that there's little things here and there. But also Rihanna's was amazing a couple oh years gosh. ago, too. And yes. my other roommates want to be her backup dancers for Halloween oh for that. Gosh. So it, it still lives on, which is cool. What about you? Have yeah. you any, had any fan favorites? Oh, my gosh. Honestly, it's really hard to say because I have literally forced myself to watch every single one. Like I've okay. seen from Prince to now. And I think probably one of the best ones to me was definitely Beyonce. Yeah, like she oh, was. I forgot top. about hers. That right. was so iconic. How could I forget? Exactly. I mean, I mean the roller on the floor, mm -hmm. bringing out Destiny's Child because you know it's Beyonce. She can't go anywhere without them. And yeah. I mean, she did that whole. I mean, this, the stage, mm -hmm. even the stage was beautifully designed. And I was like, dang, like how can you recreate this? And then you had Katy Perry later on, who also did something big and bright. And then you had Madonna. Do I know many Madonna songs? Not really, <laughs> but when she jumped out of that little thing i was like oh look at this i like this and mm -hmm. then of course the icon lady gaga yes that little it was beautiful like mm -hmm. i i'm not usually a soul song girly but when she started pulling that piano with a foot on the piano i was like okay yeah, yeah. that's you, a good one. you know what's up yeah. you're ready to make it a big thing you're ready to make it impactful entertaining exactly. and it's nice seeing people that do stuff like that yeah. whenever they really take advantage of this big opportunity because it exactly. it is a huge chance for those artists to either get back into music if they've been out of it for a while or mm -hmm. like in Kendrick's case where now his song has kind of blown up on TikTok right. and been bigger in social media that maybe this is something that skyrockets his career even more. Exactly and I really I really hope that for him because people have talked about how I mean I saw in the article that I had read like 
Kanye West said he was one of the greatest hip hop artists of our generation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's definitely a, a good take, you know, coming from somebody who doesn't really know much about hip hop. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. So this could be like something that takes him even farther, yeah. you know? And I was like, it's not like that's such a good song. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to do a halftime performance, that's how you know you're a real superstar. Yes. Like, it's all about performance quality. Mm -hmm. And hopefully he has it. So Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I, I'm sure that we'll be catching up on what's going on with that if they release any features that he'll have with him on stage. But mm -hmm. I'm already ready. I know football season just started, but I'm, I'm ready, for the, <laughs> right. ready for that halftime show already. Yes. That's all we have for tonight's episode of The Buzz. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, X, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. To keep up with all of our content, be sure to follow us on SGTV at USC.com. For SGTV, I'm Allie Pobalarchek. And I'm Kennedy Fleming. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, Carolina, forever to thee.